This is a Chairman Collins didn't call the meeting away. We discussed that. Actually, no, no, be I, I before they built yeah. before they built Route 20, it was obvious. Okay, um, it's when they we're built going Route 20 to and put, you know two uh, yeah. <laughs> is which start start the uh, we're paying attention. Start the meeting. Historically, they were always the same. Because that's right, what we right. brought up, right? This is the right one. Pardon? Yes. I guess no one paid attention uh, to you. All right. Now we're going to start the meeting. I don't have a gavel. Thank you, Fist. Sorry huh? about that. All right. So uh, we're going to call the August 30th, 2023 meeting of the Lakewood Sigmund Commission to order. Thank you all for coming. Um, and we're going we're gonna to go right into it. This, is, um, this meeting is going to be recorded. It's live right now, actually, on TV. And um, so if, if uh, if you want to review it later and see what we said and went over, then you can you can do that. Um, review and act on the acceptance of the minutes of uh, July 2023. Um, I know we need to have a correction on the um, on the minutes. It was um, Vice Chairman Pika who called the meeting to order, not not me. Wasn't me. I didn't do it. So okay. Besides that, um, 
Do I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes corrected with the uh, proper chairman's name in place. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No one? Okay. Off we go. Beautiful. Um, and review and act on, uh, oops, sorry, review and approval of the bills and expenses. There were no bills and expenses this month. No, okay. I you're waving to me. Nope. You're just giving me the thumbs down. Okay. Nine. I see the thumbs down a lot. All right. So, uh, and uh, public participation. Did anyone sign up, Alyssa? Not that I have on my list. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, commissioner's reports. We'll start off with Mr. Pica. Um, Mr. Chair, the past month uh, there's been a lot of Typical summer use of the lake. Um, from my casual observations, um, sound level of um, stereo systems was uh, still there but reduced. Uh, the water is, just from an observation point of view, as soupy as is typical of August. Anybody who's lived in the lake knows that the lake gets to use a simple vernacular term, pretty soupy. Um, a lot of cut up weeds in the water. I know somebody today who told me they had to spend $800 for their uh, uh, motorboat that uses the suction process that jet skis use to repair it from drawing in a lot of weeds. And their boat is moored in uh, Half Moon Cove. Um, that's it at the moment, Mr. Chair, other than what might come up during discussion of the items. Okay. Uh, I have some other comments, but I think they'll be better uh, expressed at a time when uh, we might deal with these things. Thank uh, you, Mr. Right. Chair. Thanks. Lieutenant Palmerton. Hello. Um, so regarding the abandoned boat at Flint Pond that we we're discussing um, that was the case was solved by Officer Charlin and turned over to environmental for charges. Um, boat was removed. Um, we had a multi agency unsafe jet ski and boating interdiction event on August 20. Uh, it was quite successful, had a lot of stops, citations, and voyage terminations, um, as well as enforcement at the DRC sides on the Worcester side of the lake. Um, we had a report of stolen jet skis, which had eventually yielded an apprehension of the suspect. Um, he was eventually arrested. Uh, we have four officers that we're sending for jet ski training on September 8th with environmental. Uh, that'll go hand in hand with our getting our jet ski in the water. Um, are you guys sending anybody to that? Jet ski? No. No. Um, if we had a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with the fair weather predicted this weekend, I'm going to have uh, extensive ramp enforcement, um, uh, including some uh, watch on Oak Island, and we'll have the, fo the boat staff whenever feasible. All right. Thank you. Um, Sergeant Garman. I'll, going off the lieutenant, we participated in that uh, joint operation on the 20th. It was very successful. Um, we actually have a handheld radar now, and we started issuing speeding tickets um, on the water uh, for the first time since I've been in charge of the boat. Um, the unfortunate thing is uh, the, the two high speeds were lake residents. Not, uh, not jet skis, they were actually motorboats. Um, so we, we issued uh, four citations for speed, and since we started doing that, and uh, we're gonna keep, keep enforcing uh, speed, and now they have our, our handheld radar gun uh, for the boat. Um, we terminated seven jet skis uh, so far this month. This month's four tows, and we're trying to do the best we can with uh, the two uh, state parks. Beautiful. So and we, we're having a constant problem. I think it's called Flint Island. Oak Island? Oak Island. No, no, no. We, uh, John, it's John Lorenzo owns the island. Oh, Twin Island. Twin, yeah. Twin Island. We're having Sunset a, Beach? We're having a co constant yeah, problem with trespassing. Yeah. Um, you know, he, uh, we're trying to do the best we can and keeping people just because of the dock. I think the dock's inviting yep. people, and uh, it's getting frustrating for the owner of the island as well as, as us. Right. It's unfortunate, too, because a lot of folks that I heard thought that 
You know, it was it was him. That was, no, it's not. It they the they actually think it's like a public island, and and yeah. you know, we, we we started enforcing it this month. Okay, good. Um, and then we had one uh, one removal from Eagle Island. Okay, were they they were actually on the island? They were, they were moored, and there was a young child that was sitting on the shore. Okay. Uh, he, he's probably like seven years old. We just told the parents, you know, they were they were moored like yeah. four or five feet off. Okay. And there was a one, young child that was sitting on the, the edge of the water in the island, playing like in the rocks and stuff. Okay. And we okay. removed them. All right. <clears throat> um, does John have no trespassing sign? He does. He does. You know, it, it's a constant. It, right now, that's a constant battle. I think we removed probably at least 10 parties from the island, like whether it's one person or five people. Right. You know, it's a, it's a constant battle. Right. I have numbers, but we do the same yeah. on a regular basis. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good that that's happening. I know some people uh, in the neighborhood will be excited about that for sure. But it's, it's definitely not, not Mr. Dorenzo. It's people that think it's a public island. Right. Okay. Yeah, because you never see his boat there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a bunch of jet skis and jet boats. Um, okay, great. Is that it? That's it. Thank you very much. Thanks for all the, all the work, guys, and especially your, your task force thing. That was, uh, that was good. Um, all right. Mr. Polito's not here. Um, the Grafton Conservation Commission thing, I just want to well, – I'll say that to in my report. Um, Ms. Samory. Um, so I've done a little bit of uh, delving into the issue of the um, dock permits that are up uh, on North Lake Ave, uh, one of which there's a permit for the dock and the other doesn't have a permit. Um, I've got a question into DPW about whether or not they want to support allowing them to have the dock on their property. Um, I didn't want to pursue you know, Lake Quinsigaman Commission rejecting their permit until we had an answer from DPW on that issue. Um, and Eric told me today that uh, there isn't, you know, any clarification yet. They've, they've got a, a change in leadership at DPW. So uh, I think we need to kind of let that settle before, mm -hmm. you know, that issue gets resolved. Um, Eric shared with me that um, there is construction of several single-family homes uh, that's going to that's going on continuously at 231 to 255 Lake Ave, as probably you're all aware. Um, the construction of a deck overlooking the lake at 249 Lake Ave is nearing completion, which the Conservation Commission had permitted before. Um, there are new notices of intent for 255 and 265 Lake Ave um, that will be on our 9-11 agenda. Um, they were required by enforcement orders issued under um, <clears throat> unpermitted clearing of the land because they had taken out a number of trees and shrubs that were there for um, water retention. Um, so they have to put all that back and they have to file a notice of intent to do it. Um, they're also seeking permit access for paths or stairs down to the lake. And then um, there's been an extension request for the Lake Quinsigaman and Flint Pond Management Drawdown Order of Conditions, and that's on our agenda for 9-11 as well. All right. And Thank you. It. Please, uh, I'm sure he's not watching, but please pass my thanks on to Eric for helping us out with that. I will. Um, much appreciated. <clears throat> All right, um, the uh, the North the North Lake Ave uh, stuff. Just to kind of yeah, like, and I, as I'd mentioned before, we'll we'll follow Worcester's lead if Worcester uh, the city and, and that's so the the the, the the part of the city that owns the land is DPW. So um, you know if they want to allow that, then no problem. But I will say that if that is the case, under the under the way that the dock permits are, are structured, that the um, that would technically be a uh, rental dock or a commercial dock, as defined by that. Because if if you if you own the land but it's not your dock or someone else's dock, 
is technically a, you know you have to, the the city would have to pull the permit, and they can work out any deal they want with the with the uh, people that are using the dock. This is in this is in the uh, the application, so you can you can you know review that, or, or we can send that out to the DPW. But then it would be a hundred dollar would be whatever the commercial dock fee. I think that's a hundred dollars now, or something. Maybe a little bit more than that. I think, I we, think it's a little more now. Yeah. So, uh, and then they would. Uh, they would, um, you know, then they can rent. The, then they're basically renting out the dock to the other, the other, the other people. Because the way that the rules are written, it's a commercial dock. If the one, the um, the boat isn't registered to the to the owner of the land, and or if the if you know it's not the or it's not the owner of the land that's using the dock, that type of thing. So I just want to clarify that so they understand. So when they're, if they do decide to keep it on there and keep the docks there and all that that they have they become a landlord they become a landlord and they're charging the they're charging the people the right amount of money that's that's that okay thank you very much for, for uh, delving into that um, we've been trying to get that cleared up forever mr. Nelson I guess I only have one thing to mention uh, the rowing on the lake is going to start increasing in the next couple of weeks the uh, the three clubs of the Masters rowers will continue probably for another two months, September and October, but uh, the uh, high school and prep school students actually were at the DRC having tryouts some days last week, and the college students will be con starting to do practices next week. So you'll probably see some increased uh, rowing practice on the lake, particularly in the early mornings, and maybe some of the women's uh, college crews later in the afternoon which will go on till, of course, we have the regattas that are mentioned in the notes uh, occur at, in two months. That's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Patrick, you're here, right? So uh, uh, is there going to be another coaches meeting thing going on? That okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Um, all right, so uh, on to um, my report. Uh, first thing is that Grafton did send me a communication and that uh, we have a, uh, they appointed a rep for the Grafton Conservation Commission to, to serve for us here in the commission. So that's good. Um, I'm assuming it's probably a new conservation yeah, thing. Because yeah, none of the old people wanted to. Yeah, right, she didn't, she didn't know any better. All right, so. So that's happening. So we're going to get a new, we're going to get a new rep from Grafton. So that's good. Um, and uh, beyond, uh, we're going to go over the, some of the lake um, management stuff afterwards. But um, and we have some we have some uh, a report also from Worcester Lakes and Pond. So uh, we'll we'll get that done there. But I did want to I did want to talk. You know, over the last like probably four to six weeks and, and we you know we met with law enforcement and I uh, met a few a couple of weeks ago and um, you know it just continues to be an, an issue and is, is and I know that um, I know there's a lot of things going on and I, I encourage the uh, encourage law enforcement to you know to, to you know go out there and kind of tell people because I get the impression that people think that there's nothing happening out there there's no one enforcing the rules and and it's just a free for all, and you know, no one's you know, no one's out there trying to trying to um, combat this and and uh, and keep the lake as safe as possible. And I can assure you that that's not the case. That um, you know, if if you listen to the numbers that that, that, that uh, these gentlemen are, are talking about, um, there's a lot of action going out there, and um, um, you know, they're, they're they're doing the best that they can to solve a problem that's just overwhelming. And it's overwhelming basically because, you know, some of the operators, uh, you know, uh, and, and especially on the jet ski side, um, you know, just either don't know or don't care if they're violating the law. And I think it's a little bit of both by, by what the reports that I'm getting and seeing in person that, um, you know, if, you, if someone, if a jet ski does buzz your boat or jump your wake or go speeding by you or pass you under the Route 20 bridge, while you're putting through there, um, endangering both the people, you know, both the people in the boat putting through and themselves, 
um, you know, you basically say something to them and they just flip you off. So um, it's happened uh, numerous times. I think it's happened to almost everyone that lives on the lake in this, or uses the lake in this, on this board. And it's, um, it's just ridiculous. And it's overwhelming and it's hard to, it's hard to uh, police it um, because you just have to be there all the time. Um, you know, I'm, when we get the jet ski from Shrewsbury and get, get that thing operational, uh, you know, that'll be a big help because right now, effectively, we're not, we're not um, policing, a, you know, at least a third of the lake. And these folks know this. They, they know that there's no policing over there, and it just becomes the Wild West. And once they get on the water, it's, 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 they've done a great job at, in, uh, on the Shrewsbury side from, you know, starting to prevent people at the Flint Pond boat ramp and on Oak Island from, um, from, you know, from even getting on the water. But once they get on the water, it's just crazy and nuts out there. So it's every weekend, I'm, you know, I'm getting emails and phone calls and Facebook posts and, um, you know, the, the, the jet ski theft, I think, is, it, it's, that's a whole different, that's a whole different uh, you know, animal at, at this point. But the, but the operational issues of people speeding and, um, you know, driving recklessly and uh, I've seen people towing people out there, people without vests out there, underage um, people operating the, the jet skis, a rental business going on. It's just crazy. So what I'd like to propose that we do, it's not just jet skis either, because we have other issues. We have, um, we have a wakeboard issue, a wake boat issue right now uh, that, that, we, that we're trying to rope. And, and it's not just here in Quinn Sigmund, it's all over. And by the way, the jet ski things are all over the place too. But it's just getting to be overwhelming with that. And we put up no wake zones, which um, I'm getting reports from, from the local people that are right there at, at uh, Kings Point, for example, that 90% of the people are, are, are banging the, the no wake at Kings Point. Kings Point is a particularly dangerous place. It's a place where we've already had a fatality. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to say. The 10%, the, you know, that needs to stop as well. And it's particularly egregious in my mind that they're towing people through there, not boats, the towing skiers or whatever, the towing, you know, tubes and whatnot. And um, that's particularly egregious because not only is it a, a no line of sight for the boat, there's no, certainly no line of sight for a boat with something, someone 60 feet behind them either, you know, tied to the boat. So uh, that's really dangerous. And in fact, when they had a fatality there, it was a skier and a, and a sculler. That's what happened. So, um, and the skier hit the sculler. And, and, uh, and kill them. So it's the type of thing that we have to, we have to combat. There's also, um, you know, just the, you know, just the, the general uh, kind of misuse of the lake and unsafe use of the lake. So we want to kind of combat that. What I, I would like to propose is that we form a subcommittee um, to meet at least a couple of times between now and, and September meeting and uh, that would be made up of a, of a couple of people from the commission. Hopefully law enforcement can participate and um, you know, maybe someone from the watershed uh, wants to get involved and we come up with some solutions. And I'd like to start off with the jet ski thing. And on the jet ski part of it, um, you know, there's a lot of things on the table. There were some things that we discussed when we had the meeting in, at the Shoes, with the Shrewsbury and Worcester PD a couple of weeks ago. One of them that was, you know, instituting some type of quiet time where we actually have in a busy in a busy time of day we'll have a, um, you know, in a, a couple hours that that you just don't you don't make a wake period you just kind of put around the lake. Um, uh, other things are having um, Mr. Nelson had, had proposed maybe uh, requiring that jet skiers and uh, have some kind of educational requirement to learn the rules of the Lake Sigmund, to learn the rules of uh, Chapter 90B in terms of how to operate a jet ski and how to operate things safely and following speed limits and what's, what's acceptable and what's not out there, and then sticker the jet ski um, so that we know that they've, they've passed the course. And, uh, and so everything's on the table. A ban, a total jet ski ban on Lake Sigmund's on the table. So uh, let's discuss all that stuff and come back with some um, 
you know, recommendations from the subcommittee to say this is what we're going to do, have a hearing, and implement them. Because it's just getting crazy. We're having a hard time um, stopping it. It doesn't seem to be going away as, as much as we, we try to with law enforcement, as much as we try to hear and educating people as much as we can, and it's just not happening. So to be honest, I'm just tired of it. I'm just tired of the whole thing. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of people fighting and, and calling up, and they're all outraged and they don't understand what's going on, you know, enough's enough. And the operators know who they are. I don't, they're probably not watching this right now, but the message is, if you're not gonna behave, then, you know, we're just gonna come after you and whatever we have to do. If it's eliminate you from the lake, it's whatever we have to do. If we have to implement rule 29 and 30, which is basically we can ban an operator and their vessel for a period of 12 months, then that's what we do. So if we have to do a total ban on a particular type of watercraft because they just won't you know, settle down and obey the law, then that's what we'll do. Because the safety's first and you know, someone's gonna get hurt and we're really lucky, in my, well, we've already had a couple accidents with jet skis, but we're really lucky uh, that it hasn't gotten worse than it is, so. Edith, can I uh, make a comment? Sure. Uh, these are things that the commission can do, but I, I'd just like to mention, because it hasn't been said in several years, we used to almost say this almost every year, a few years back. Uh, there are a lot of things that the public out there, those on TV and those sitting here, can do to help this problem. And what it is in particular is they can do something to help law enforcement here get the resources they need. Now, every year, you know, the town manager in Shrewsbury and the police chief get together, the Worcester police chief and town manager get together, and they have to work out their budgets. And the budgets for the police department, law enforcement, get assigned to those areas with the most problems. And one of the problems like Lincoln Sigelman has is that very few people complain to either the town of Shrewsbury or the city of Worcester when they see offenses occurring. We need to get a good record in both town and city to, of what's going on in the lake and people uh, uh, breaking the law. Then we'll get an increased amount of resources, hopefully applied to law enforcement, to help them try and solve the problem. So you can help by making sure that every time something <clears throat> that should not be occurring, illegal, you observe it, make a complaint, and then we'll hopefully get greater uh, resources for law enforcement to do their job. All right, thanks. Um, to to uh, piggyback onto that, that's, that's really true. I would add uh, your state reps and that mix of people you should contact as well. And I can say that it is working. I mean, you know, this year, We've, got, we've gotten increased um, uh, resources from, from Shrewsbury and Worcester, who've, you know, put a, Worcester brought a brand new boat. They've trained, what, eight officers, I think? Uh, 13. Yeah. 13. You guys did 12? Uh, I'm not sure how many we did additionally, but we have about uh, 15 primary. 15, oh, yeah, so yeah, it's got to be because yeah, it was yeah. like two or three. Well, Tim didn't count because he didn't like the water part, but no. <laughs> But yeah, so so yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's 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 been a it's been a beneficial thing. So it has worked, and in one of the reasons, that, and one of the big reasons it has is because it's not just us talking about it every month. It's it's also people calling up and saying, "Hey, we have a problem down here," um, and uh, you know, these are these are uh, all issues that we that we that uh, you know deserve attention. And uh, you're not going to get attention unless you, you, you're kind of speaking up. It's kind of the, kind of the, grease, uh, the squeaky wheel syndrome. Um, that's not to say, please don't be calling these, you know, the, anybody in law enforcement and abusing them you know, on the phone and saying, you've got to get down here and do your job and all that. And I, and I also would, that's another thing that uh, on the lake, part of it for me is that I've, I'm hearing a lot of stories of that happening where people, when they have interactions with police officers that they're literally abusing them and you know telling them to go do the job and you know why you're stopping me and all this and that's unacceptable that's another thing I don't want to hear these guys are out there working it's not an easy job it's a dangerous job so um, you know you should appreciate whatever they're you know whatever they're doing to help um, um, you know keep the lake safe and if that means that they're stopping you because you're doing something that's unsafe then that's what it is you know it's it, in my mind it's a myth to say that you know nobody from the, uh, the, the residents of the lake are, are out, 
you know, doing stuff that they shouldn't do and breaking the law and speeding and all kinds of stuff. So I know it happens. Um, so that's that. And the other, the other thing on the safety part of it is, is the loud music. Not that that's so much a safety issue, it's just a, just a total public nuisance. So that's another thing we want to go after. So um, that's my sad story on, on, uh, on that part of it. You asked for a committee, Mr. Chair. What's that? You asked for a committee. Oh, a committee. So, yes, um, I, I know that you might be interested in, I don't want to put you on the spot, to serve on the subcommittee. Yeah. I sent an email yesterday saying yes. Okay. Um, well, just want to get that in front of everyone. Law enforcement, is that something we can, we can do, gentlemen? Certainly. Yeah. Yep. You know, I want to make it as convenient for you as possible. It's not going to be, it's going to be meeting twice and maybe in, you know, an hour, an hour and a half or whatever. I thought the, you know, just to kind of get through there. And, it, and your input is um, critical to what we're going, what we, you know, what we need to, to do. Because I don't know what it's like to be in that boat and, you know, on the other side of it. So, um, and then the watershed, I'm going to throw that out there. And, you know, no one needs to respond right now. But if there's not, that's something that we can, uh, we can work on, I'd appreciate it. All right. Question? Yes. Well, um, is it, the uh, issues on Flint, the Flint Pond area are, are, are very acute. The police have been great. But is it, possible, is it possible to get a Flint Pond representative on the committee? Yeah, you have one. Committee? Is it? Who's that? Me. Oh. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. So you lucked out on that. What's that? Uh, <laughs> um, so. Uh, so that's good. All right. Uh, moving on, we can talk after the after the thing. And um, all right, commission's reports review and uh, possibly act on request to close the boat ramp for Regatta Point sailing fall rowing. That's a lot of words on there. Fall rowing event for 10-8-2023. Is so sailing or rowing? Uh, so it's Regatta Point Community Sailing. Oh, rowing, yeah. Putting it on. For the rowing. rowing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. On a Sunday. On Sunday the 8th, correct? On Sunday the 8th. Perfect. The event was previously approved. We just need to approve the boat ramp closure. Okay. Um, and you, I, I, got, I had permits in here. I think that was from. That's this is This is Patrick. This is something else, right? Okay. So we just, do, do we have a. Uh, Right, but you only need the eighth. We only need the eighth. Patrick is gonna. And that's the seventh. And we want the ramp closed both days. Okay. And is the ramp the ramp closure parts and 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 uh, on yours, Patrick? Yes. And we just have that for the seventh on this one. No, the twenty the the twenty eighth. I'm sorry, I kept saying the. Uh, okay, so this one. So the 7th, 8th, and the 28th of October. They're looking for ramp closures. Okay. You just need two motions. All right. So do I have a motion to approve a ramp closure for 10-8 for uh, the Regatta Point sailing row, row, fall rowing <laughs> event? Sorry. Make a motion to, to, ac to accept closing the, the ramp on that day. Second. Is... Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All those opposed? Nobody. All right. Good. And then an, a, a, another motion for um, the Wormtown Well, the chase. 7th and 28th. Oh, the 7th it's and 28th. It's another. Okay. We should have done the 7th and the 20th and the same thing. All right. So, so the 7th and the 28th for a ramp closure for those two uh, events. Rowing event. Pardon me. And the, the permit from you guys. The and the permit from us. Oh yes, for, a permit for the for, and permit for the actual event too, for for uh, for the for the chase and the snake. Correct. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Chris, can I just make, ask one question of sure. Mr. Diggins? Is that the last? I'm I'm just trying to know when we should park our boat for the year. Is the 28th the last? of all type of things for rowing and, and stuff. Okay, all right. All right, I'm just, I'm trying to, so I can make arrangements to have the boat 
Went to the eyes and put away. Yeah, that's, that's, well, no, that's, and that's about as late as you want to go. All right. Because yeah. um, right at, on the 1st of uh, November, we're going we're gonna to probably start drawing down. Okay. So yeah. I want to get that thing out of there. They also, they, they put the Shrewsbury pulls the boat ramps as well. Oh, they pull the docks? Docks, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. So, good question. Um, all right. So, you guys are all set with that. Thank you. Uh, lake management uh, report. Update on the Quinsigerman drawdown. We have permits on there, uh, permit extensions for Worcester. I think Shrewsbury were all set we're, because we have, we're, we're uh, okay for the 20. To 2024 on, our, on that one, and then we'll have to redo that. I think the next thing we have to do is um, file a new permit, so we're, we're going to have to do that over the winter. Grafton has not responded um, to that, so I, I have I have that one to uh, I have that one pending. And um, weed mapping, we're going to have to do another weed map. Uh, after we, um, we're going to use this weed map we have this year, and then, and then next year we're going to do another weed mapping. So we get ready for, to uh, to kind of fund that next year. Uh, update from Natural Heritage: I, there is none there. Um, invasive species treatment on Lake Winsigamond and Newton Pond. I don't have a lot of information on Newton Pond, but we did do a treatment in Zone A, which I'm going to let um, Nick do the details on. Uh, that Worcester did with the uh, on the 23rd, correct? And um, and there's a uh, again there's not no report on the Newton Pond. Um, and going right into that, um, Nick, you're you're up. So come on up and do, introduce yourself. Tell us what you do. Absolutely, got some handouts. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. My name is Nick Pagan. I'm a senior environmental analyst with the City of Worcester Department of Sustainability and Resilience in the Lakes and Ponds program. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our um, water quality monitoring um, in Lake Quinsig, as well as some uh, recent management activities. Um, so first off, um, both uh, the beaches at Regatta Point and Lake Quinsigman State Park are still closed for swimming. Um, the last uh, testing date was August 22nd, um, and due to the um, high mean <clears throat> of results, they've continued to be closed. So it's likely both will be closed for the rest of the swimming season, unfortunately. Can I, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, uh, but I'm going to. Um, so, because uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions about, you know, is the lake safe? Mm -hmm. And the beach closings uh, in particular are basically about the beaches. They're not, it's, right. not really a, it's not really a lake-wide thing. It seems that when, when, this, when we test in the middle of the lake, it's okay. So, so if you went out and tested in the middle of the lake right off of Regatta Point, that's going to be a different result than you get right at, right at the beach. Absolutely. So okay. E. coli results tend to be, or sorry, E. coli exceedances tend to be very localized to areas where, say, uh, goose feces are going into the water. Right. Um, e. coli results that we have taken, as well as the Watershed Association in the middle of the lake, have consistently been below the recreational threshold. Um, so water in the middle of the lake is not. Uh, we have not seen it to be a concern. Okay. So, um, and, it, and it's it, just so I can, you know, for, for the folks at home that may, that may be watching tonight, that, um, you know, these are very localized uh, issues. So at the beaches, and, we, and I, my, my understanding is, bless you, my understanding is that it's basically, we think it's, it's probably a waterfowl issue because they hang out at the beaches and, and, uh, and the boat ramp actually at night and, it just causes a mess. So, um, but you know, swimming in front of your house because that's the whole. That's the questions I'm getting. Hey, I'm having some people over, you know, this weekend, and you know, is it okay to swim at my house? And you know, first question I have to ask is, where's your house? Mm -hmm. So, but that said, it shouldn't be an issue if you're not. Your house isn't at the beach. To my understanding. Yeah. Yep. 
And and another another thing to add to that is that um, the way that DCR does their testing, um, if they have an exceedance, they maintain their original weekly schedule. Right. Um, and those results, given the fact that E. coli can only live outside of a warm-blooded animal for about three days, those results are indicative of a snapshot in time. Um, so, you know, what's happening now is likely different five days later. Okay. Um, this is a chance to ask yep. a question here. Uh, understanding the fact that, you know, like these geese pooping is very localized and that E. coli can only live for a short time, I have a question about the DCR. If you go to the state of Massachusetts website, and I, I've been checking this all summer, uh, if the DCR gets one test positive, they list the whole of Lake Quinsigamon is closed. And worse yet, once they get a positive test, the state doesn't seem to remove that from the website for the rest of the summer. Mm. Do you know why this inf local information about the testing is not being propagated up into the uh, upper strata of the DCR? Sure. Yeah, I, I don't know much about their how they share that information. Uh, one thing that I would say is that we receive the DCR results when they get them, um, and the Lakes and Ponds program runs a text notification system um, that anybody that is interested in uh, subscribing to it um, can find on our website, uh, worcesterma.gov slash bluespace. Um, and we report for all of the uh, tested beaches in Worcester as well as the um, uh, two state-run beaches on Lake Quinsigamond and any other, say, treatment-related or other issues on, on the lakes. So that, that is one centralized place that people can look for those for up-to-date results. Um, but I know that that has has been something that people have asked about. In the yes, past. I do know that the city of Worcester and the town of Shrewsbury do localize the spot. They'll tell us where the test is done, mm -hmm. and they'll also send a notice out as soon as it comes in clear. It's just the DCR that seems to be a little less than efficient here. Mm. <clears throat> um, okay, so the, so the kind of takeaway here is that unless you have a bunch of waterfowl hanging around the front of your house, uh, typically, you should be okay in the water. And yet, at this time of year, the the only other thing I would I would put in there is you may want to keep an eye out for um, uh, cyanobacteria because it seems to kind of rear up them this 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 next four weeks or five weeks or so, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you see a green slime or something like that in front of your your waterfront, uh, best not to dive into it or let your kids or pets swim in it. So other than that, you should generally be okay. If you have a question about a particular area, then when you do ask about it, please specify where you are so we can, uh, we can know. If you have any suspicions that something may not be right, then you, know, you can ask us to, to uh, come take a look at it, and we'll do it. I know that, uh, and I don't know if, I'm not going to speak for Nick here, but uh, I know Jacqueline was really good about uh, going down and looking at stuff when someone, some, especially if someone reported uh, cyanobacteria. Um, that said, it's really hard to chase that sometimes because sometimes you'll see it in the morning and by the time someone gets there, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it's gone. And something to add to that, the city of Worcester this year has started using a cyanobacteria reporting form that is also on our website at worcesterma.gov slash blue space. Perfect. Specifically for Lake Quinsigamon, because it's so large, we rely on the the people on the lake to um, let us know when and where these things are happening. Mr. Right. Chair? Yes. And specifically, a part of this conversation in regards to this last summer holiday weekend of the year where... We all know there'll be a lot of people due to predicted good weather and because it's the end of summertime, we'll be drawn to the beaches of Regatta Point State Park. And I refer to it as Quinsigamon State Park. It's down here as Lake Park status. Lake Park, my understanding, is where the Tivlin ball field is. There's no beach there. There's a beach across the street at the Quinsigamon State Park. Do you know as to whether those beaches will be open this weekend or not? To my understanding, they are currently closed to swimming. Okay, currently um, closed. So, so they won't 
have lifeguards. People, I think, are allowed to be on the beaches themselves, but to my understanding, they are not open to swimming. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. For public knowledge. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Signing. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, so moving on to our monitoring results. Um, temperature, surface temperature in the lake um, is, is going down with the cold nights that we've started to have. I believe we've kind of passed peak surface temperatures uh, for the season. Uh, you can see here there's just a little correction on, on our sheet. Um, surface temperature date says it's 5-1. It should be 8-23. Um, so for the uh, committee's uh, knowledge. Um, so so we're, we're happy to see that we're kind of past the, the peak summer temperatures likely. Um, surface dissolved oxygen has, has continued to be high, um, although I'm going to go into a little bit more about what's happening with oxygen in the rest of the depth profile um, in a minute. Um, so our uh, total phosphorus on the surface has been uh, low. Our last uh, results indicated that they were non-detect, which means they were below the reporting limits from our testing laboratory. Um, however, uh, water clarity, as, as was said earlier, the water has looked a little bit soupy. The clarity has been um, continuing to drop. Um, the average clarity at our two sampling sites, the last time we were out on 823, was um, around six and a half feet, um, which is, is low for this time of year. Um, so it's something we're keeping an eye on. It's not in a concerning range, but it's... it's um, it is on the lower side of what we tend to see. Um, and as the fall goes on, as um, you know, the lake starts to turn over, we will likely see some lower clarity in the water column. Um, so looking at what's happening with temperature and dissolved oxygen in the water column, um, the lake is thermally stratified as normally happens at, at this time of year. Uh, we see that um, both temperature and dissolved oxygen are dropping off in bo both the north and south basins around 20 feet, um, although there's a little bit of an oxygen bump around 40 feet. Um, this is, you know, exactly what we expect for this time of year. It's a very, a very common dynamic for the lake, um, it, and, but it is um, always a concern for cold water fish as they um, get pushed from the bottom by low oxygen and pushed from the top by high high temperature and can only exist within a small uh, temperature or a small depth range. Um, so moving on to the testing that we've done with the Worcester Cyanobacteria Monitoring Collaborative. For those who don't know, that is a group of community scientists um, that do testing in local lakes and ponds. They are not state certified methods, and we're not able to make. Um, advisories based on them, but they are indicators for what we're seeing in local lakes. Um, Lake Winsigamond, we did not, uh, the, the uh, bloom risk that we saw uh, in our most recent testing on the 19th was low. It was good to see we have seen um, cyanobacteria in the samples that we've gotten, but we haven't had any indication that there's excessive growth at this time. Um, Jordan Pond, we have seen more cyanobacteria activity. And again, we can't necessarily make advisories with this, uh, with these data, but it's um, that that was what was was found, not in the blooming category when when we last tested, but it was it was in the elevated uh, elevated risk of bloom category, um, and uh, Newton Pond has has looked really good through the course of the season, um, as as usual. We don't tend to see a lot of issues with cyanobacteria from the samples in that program. Um, so moving on to the management stuff. Um, so we were, uh, so this year we were able to contract um, management for milfoil in management zone A uh, through a company called All Habitat Services. Um, <clears throat> we had a, a treatment on 823 um, last week, uh, we had, uh, you know, had kind of a back and forth about whether we were going to um, close the lake to boat traffic or close the ramp. We decided that it wasn't possible due to time constraints, but also likely not necessary. And when the contractor was out there last Wednesday, they said that water was calm and there were very few boats on the lake and they had no problems 
So they were, especially given the calm conditions, they were very uh, optimistic about the efficacy of, of the treatment. Um, they said they'd be back in about a week uh, to take a look to see uh, what the milf, how the milfoil looked, whether it was starting to die off. Um, and I checked in with them today. I haven't gotten a call back, but I'll be continuing to follow up with them. And I think they were checking to see if they would need to do any retreatment. Um, so I'll, I'll keep everyone involved are informed on that as we move forward. But we're happy that we're able to um, do it with, with no, no major issues. Uh, and hopefully we'll see some, some dieback on the milfoil in management zone A. Um, the other thing I have to, to report is we're finally, you know, unfortunately due to, um, due to some uh, you know, staffing stuff, you know, Jacqueline moving on to her new position, uh, we've been a little bit strapped for time. Uh, but we were finally able to put our continuous monitoring buoys in uh, the northern basin near the Donahue Rowing Center, Ramshorn Island, uh, much thanks to Mike Liberty uh, helping us out with this boat. Um, we were able to get those in um, about a week and a half ago. Um, so we'll be, we'll be watching those look, uh, we'll be watching the results from those locations as they come in. That's all I have for today. Perfect. Mr. Chair, can I just add? Sure. And we'd be interested, the commission, in knowing your ongoing results from those buoys. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to have you share that information with us. Um, so so just, just a disclaimer, the data that we're collecting from those buoys right now, we're still not quite sure how to, um, how to contextualize it. You know, we don't have a solid QAQC process for it at the moment. Um, but, you know, we're happy to share it kind of with that disclaimer, you know, okay. we're, we're using it as an indicator <clears throat> of what's going on, but they're not um, verifiable in the way that, say, our monitoring, uh, internal monitoring program data are. Um, so, so just, just with that uh, in mind. Okay. But absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. Um, just to, for everyone's clarification, that, that uh, management zone A is... Um, Essentially, from Ramshorn Island on the south end, all the way up to uh, West Main Street or you know Couch Park on the uh, on the northern side. So it's basically from from the Route Nine Bridge north to the end of the lake. That's uh, management management zone A. And I think I think we did about twenty acres or so, twenty or twenty two acres over there uh, for milfoil. So. Um, uh, we'll see how it goes. The question that the, on the Priscilla Corps, if this, if this, uh, you know, if they go back and they say, okay, yeah, it's 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 dying off, it's doing what we want it to do, is that, and I I, I keep forgetting which ones are last more than a season and, and which ones don't. So is Priscilla Corps one of the ones we don't treat with every year? We don't need to treat with every year, or is that, or is that like an every season thing? That's a question that I could I could ask the contractor. I'm not, okay, I'm not positive. All right, I just wanted clarify that and for my own edification perfect is that is that it nick that's it you did a good job you, thank you for your first one awesome. <laughs> nice thanks all right thank you so much thank you um so and now for the for the really fun part an update from the lakewood sigerman watershed association Hello, I'm Barbara Kickham with the Lake Quinsigamond Watershed Association. Um, Bill, I just looked up real quickly. Um, when DCR posts their beach closings, they say DCR beach. They don't say the whole lake. So I don't know if you're looking at something else. Um, but they uh, are specific I was about looking at the uh, long list of, uh, I don't know how many hundred ponds and lakes in Massachusetts. And that list of ponds and lakes uh, only refers to the, each one as a whole body of water. Yeah. Okay, maybe you could show me that later. If you go to DCR Beach Closings, Google that, right. you know, list of their, um, the, their beaches that they sample, and it, was, and it says that um, Lake Quinsigaman Lake Park, DCR, and Lake Quinsigaman Regatta Point are closed due to bacterial exceedances. And one of the reasons that they stay on so long is once you get a really high number, the, the average doesn't allow you to, um, to uh, take it off the list. 
Yeah, this is the state list of lakes and ponds, not the, the DCR one, which if you go directly to DCR, you see what you just described. Okay. All right. All right. I'll look at that. What, what, are, the, what, what are they? What's that? What, were the, what did they call, DCR called the two beaches? Uh, Lake Park Beach and Regatta Point Beach. Even they call it Lake Park Beach. Well, uh, you know, and I... I'm just teasing you. Lake Quinsigam and Park. Perfect. I stand to be edified, but I believe I'm correct. Uh, All right. Uh, um, okay, you know, so... Uh, <coughs> there, there are two distinct parks. The city of Worcester on the east side of Lakeside west side of Wake, Lake, Lake, Lake Ave. That's called, where the Buffoni is, and where the Tibden Field is, that's called Lake Park area. On the east side of L Lake Ave, that abuts Lake Quinsigamon, that's called Quinsigamon State Park. Anybody here? Any? All, right, all right. I mean, uh, we don't have, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. always been called Lake Park. <laughs> I may be wrong, but I think when we go by Quinsigamon State Park, there's a sign in that says Quinsigamon. Gee. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to have to talk oh, to the, the governor and get people, that changed. You know, whatever. Okay. As long Google, as we know Google Maps has it listed about. as both. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Both. DCR is an older own property. DCR, the two parks together are Quinsigamon State Park. That's what I thought. So the two together, because they're operated and managed by, by the same group of people. Lake Park is the southern park. Regatta Point is the northern park. That's my understanding. I have no facts other than. <coughs> no, right. it's on. It's somewhere on the website because yeah. I've seen that as well. Yeah. That's what I always thought it was too. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to. As long thing. as we know, okay. what but we know about. we're talking about. Okay, so right. both beaches, state that park place. beaches, are currently closed for swimming. And to get to your question, Peter, about bacteria in the lake, um, we have been doing our bacteria sampling for four years now. Um, we had some of the most disturbing bacteria results we've had in four years. And when I compare it to the data collected by DEP over the last 25, 30 years, it's some of the worst. And the reason for that was we went out in the middle of a storm and got first flush off the pavement. There was a tornado warning August 8th. We were sampling right in the middle of it. So we got mm. the samples right as it came off the pavement. Now, it's been raining a lot, but it, you know, it hadn't rained for a few days before. But we had results that were, uh, Fitzgerald Brook, over 80,000. The standard one sample shall not exceed 410. So orders of magnitude Holy higher cow. than allowable. Um, the, we had... 20, over 20,000 at Belmont Street, Outfall, Coal Mine, Brook, um, over 15,000 at O'Hara Brook, which is Whitla Ave. Um, very high numbers because you're getting whatever, whatever's on the pavement, animals, raccoons, the dog, you know, waste, whatever. It's going into the lake. So what does it mean? I mean, the next time we went out two weeks later, the results were still not great but much more typical we had we had three exceedances um, for example um, the Fitzgerald Brook which is near Maducas and that area for people who aren't, aren't familiar that was only at 325 so it was um, you know it went way down so it um, cleared up pretty quick yes because yeah. it had not been Rain. You guys do it every two weeks, right? Is that what we're doing? We go out every two weeks. Yeah. We go out every two weeks on Tuesday, whether it's raining or not. So what does that mean? It means that the sample we got was probably what happens every time it rains a lot, and it right. hasn't <clears throat> rained for a couple of days before, you get this big flush of bacteria into the lake. And then it goes away. It goes away. That same day, our two samples mid-lake were fine. There were 6 and 13, so they were... As you say, in the middle of the lake, it dissipates very quickly, but it's still putting in these high levels of bacteria into the lake. Um, so we're very concerned about it. Yeah, does it hang out? In the, like, what happens to it? it? Well, the sun kills it. Um, you know, it dives down. The cold. Oh, it's, and so the it's heat dying off. It's not. Dies off. It's not, it doesn't go into the sediment and stay there. Like bacteria a, does. That's all we're sampling for. Yeah. So we just it just brings to we just need to bring it to everyone's attention that. Stormwater needs to be addressed by both Shrewsbury and Worcester. 
Mr. Chair, as it enters the lake. It's really where we're going to look back on this and say, how did we let stormwater go into this lake with hundreds of residents and th thousands of people using this lake all summer, rowers, all kinds of sailors, and we haven't done anything about the stormwater. I mean, it's. Mr. Yeah. Chair, yeah. Oh, hold on a second. Mike, Mike went for it. I want to uh, applaud your concern. I want to let the public here know, who are here tonight but are listening, that in regards to yet another example of something like this that occurs chronically, but yet the city, the Department, well, the Department of Transportation is going to deal with, and that is the underpass on Route 20 where Grafton Street. Everybody reads in the paper about how when there's a heavy rainstorm, it floods there, cars flood in there. They're going to redo, okay, that drainage system that comes into the lake approximately, I believe, behind uh, the Half Moon Tavern at Sears Plaza on Route 20. They're talking about putting uh, a retention base in there. There's going to be a public hearing on this, but people need to go and speak up at a time like that when the Department of Transportation is taking planning and actual initiative to rectify that particular problem there, which is a chronic problem, Route 20 under the Grafton Street floods. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. They're going to they're gonna re-engineer that, but if there's going to be a public hearing, people need to go and let it be known. They need to engineer the runoff from that area so that it's not going into Flint Pond with God knows what. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in support of your comment about bacteria, uh, and in particular with Mike's comment about the total lack of retention basins around Lake Quinsigamon, uh, all of the uh, rowing clubs this summer have been talking about it. It's, it. We've had so much rain coming in that you cannot scull or take a, a sweep boat down the lake without hearing bump, bump, bump from all these little tiny sticks, you know, a half inch, one inch in diameter, seven or eight inches long, small pieces of floatable trash. This summer it's just been unbelievable because we've had so much rain all, all summer long. And what it proves is that there really is a deficit of retention basins on all of the inflows into the lake, whether they're storm drains or, or small streams. Uh, the trash gets flushed down and it's floating on the surface of the lake every time we have a major rainstorm. <coughs> so it's not just bacteria, there's other evidence proving the lack of retention basins. Exactly, and that's kind of what I wanted to bring up is that we see these this large amount of bacteria, what else is coming in? Yes, and we see the trash. If I've taken my kayak out right after a storm event too, and you see literally a delta-shaped wedge, a plume of debris coming from mm. Poor Farm Brook, because that's a major <clears throat> um, uh, input to the lake. Yes, and after a major so rainstorm, I sculled down the lake, and, and every 10 feet I hear bump, 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 bump. And it, this is much, much worse than it's been for mm -hmm. the previous many summers. Mm -hmm. right. is, is the problem equal on both sides of the lake? Is it you know, coming from both, both Shrewsbury and Worcester? No, or it's worse it, on Worcester, much yeah. worse on Worcester, Worcester yeah. side. Probably because we of have, the elevation of the Worcester bank? Well, it's, it's much more um, populate, heavily populated, much more um, impervious surfaces, mm -hmm. um, so the, the the watershed basically that drains to the lake on the Worcester side is it goes all the way up Belmont Hill and all that goes all the way up to Worcester Country Club. Um, it's it's just a lot. Um, there's a lot more to enter from the Worcester side, but our numbers are much worse there than they are at Tilly, Billings, and uh, Meadow Brook, which we sample on the Worcester on the Shrewsbury side. It's just mo way more people. And what's the status? And the pumping station. We've also this year started pumping right, collecting right outside the pumping station at Lake Ave, which is, um, you know, we're, we had pretty high numbers there. It wasn't an overflow, but we still had 3,000 on that rainy day. So even though it's not an accident. Um, yeah. Well, that outfall is right from the parking lot, so it's coming down Lake Ave and into yeah. the parking lot and into the yep. lake. Do we know what the status is on the project to improve the combined sewer overflow situation on the Worcester side? It's not a combined sewer overflow, technically. Just I just get the language correct. It's, it, there's only one CSO in Worcester. It's not in our watershed. It's over by Mill Street. 
just it's it is an overflow when there's an accident or pipe breaks or the capacity is overwhelmed it just goes into the parking lot and it and then it goes into the lake comes out the catch um, out the, the manhole and goes into yeah. lake just just for semantics because it matters when you talk to the DPW about right, right. and, and uh, you know that's a that's a different that's an issue that I don't I don't know how they go will address it but because that's their that's their uh, um, you know default if there's something happens in the pump house it goes into the parking lot and then that's a direct well, only a direct outfall right at the, the lake. at the bottom of the parking lot goes into the lake happened three or so five that's, times in the last 25 years that's that's uh mm -hmm. more than that yeah so um anyway but that's so it's a disturbing report um so we our intern we uh, weeks we just finished week seven we have three more weeks she's gonna um or um they're gonna do their presentation in october the october meeting of yep. the this year's sampling and we'll have some more All right analysis hopefully and also I'm not sure if I mentioned it last time but um, Abby is going to do a uh, presentation at well we're not sure if it's a presentation uh, poster session or if it's gonna be a talk but she's presented a, an abstract to the American Geophysical Union um, meeting in December so she's gonna do present present on our results our bacteria results right. so I think that's it's good yeah. get, get that information out there um, our next um, LQWA meeting is probably going to be the, um, the 14th, but it's still tentative. Um, the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary has contacted us about being at the meeting. I sent him to you. I don't know if you talked to him. I have not yet, no. Um, but he wants to help law enforcement, you know, maybe do check, bo boating safety checks. Um, so we're going to, you know, just meet with him and see what we can how we can use their services to help with All right. some of that. Perfect. And um, that's it. All right. That's it. Barbara, thank you. Yep. Mike, just a uh, quick question on your stormwater runoff. My neighbor, he's about 60 feet from the outfall of O'Hara Road. He put a dock in the water about 15, 18 years ago with wheels on it like this. Somebody should cut, you guys can get down to, during the drawdown. You can't see those wheels. And you got to dig this far through the soil to get to the wheels. That's how right. much runoff has come from O'Hara Brook. Right, that's been going on for a while, and and some of that's coming from uh, the Big Light Plaza, yeah. South Plaza, all yeah. the Grafton Street area. Yeah, I mean that that's really that really took a manifested even worse after they put the the plaza in there. Right, and like she said, the, the stuff that comes in after a rainstorm. Right, is right. I've also noticed it uh, in front of, uh, or I should say, back of Rams Horn Island. After a storm, same thing. Debris. The debris really surprised me actually, because it wasn't it wasn't sticks. It was like uh, plastic Lumps. bottles and nip bottles and caps, and yes. it, it literally looked like I don't know someone dumped their garbage in there, and you know the the water was coffee color. So and that was right after another right after mm. a storm thing. So um, the good news is that Lake Musigwin has a as a as a great natural flow. It's really deep right there. Um, so it doesn't seem to last long, but it's still very disturbing. And I agree with Barbara. And I think, uh, to be honest, you know, and I'm not diminishing the, my my previous comments on jet skis today, but you know, the most dangerous thing that faces Lake Winsigamond are the outfalls and the in the brooks we have coming in. Here. <coughs> you know, and a lot of the stuff coming from the brooks are coming from outfalls that are in the brook. So it's basically outfalls, and we have a whole bunch of stuff coming in every year, 300, well, you know, basically 365 days a year, but any time it rains, it's even worse. So anytime someone watches their car in the driveway, you know, that, that could potentially end up in the lake. So matter of fact, it's likely that it'll be end up in the lake if it's anywhere on the, you know, the hills of Shrewsbury and, and Worcester. So um, it's, it's something to be, you know, pay attention to. And I don't think it's just Lake Winsigman. I think anyone in any watershed, because they're all kind of built up now and they got houses around them, it's all something that we should all be paying attention to. And, you know, the, the, the one thing that I will say that, the, you know, we can do a small part. We can all, as residents, we can all play a small part on the lake or keep things clean is, you know, not do stuff like wash your car in the driveway or, you know, um, uh, you know, use chemicals on your lawn that may also get on the street and get into the into the stormwater um, system. All right, um, 
So review correspondence. I have one correspondence here from um, uh, Mr. Allen, Mr. Allen who, is, who is here. And uh, we discussed that. I'll, I mean, happy to, to sit down and talk to you about that afterwards because I'm a, I'm a neighbor. So, uh, um, but basically, it was as we discussed. It was a you know this is just crazy over there at at at, uh, at point at uh, Point Rock and at Flint Pond in general. Where I, I can re I can attest to you know a busy day on Flint Pond. And, you know, f four years ago was five boats, and um, you know now that is not the case. Um, a busy day on Flint Pond is probably 15 jet skis just buzzing around. Um, to and fro and just going crazy. So I'm not going to beat that horse anymore <coughs> tonight. But the other correspondence I have, which I don't have right in front of me, is that a gentleman had um, reached out and, and asked if we could um, open up the uh, this two state ramps, the Corazini ramp and the Flint Pond boat ramp. Is that you, sir? Oh, I thought you raised your hand. <coughs> that, uh, to um, for no charge for veterans. Um, I will certainly look at that. I, I think that um, Kevin Esposito, because Kevin, because uh, the Shoesby Parks actually runs, manages the ramp. So I think Kevin's going to follow up on that. But um, I will also follow up to see if that's something that um, uh, boating and access will, will let us do, uh, is, to, is to separate that out. I don't have a problem with it. I think that's probably a, a good thing to do, but we'll, uh, we'll see if we can do that. All right, um, that said, I think we're at the end. Set the date for the next meeting. I can set the date, but not the location yet. We can either do it in this room the week before, which is the 20th, same time as usual, or we can ask the police station and go in there. Mark says that it is set up technologically. I just have to get the proper permission. And it looks free according to the calendar, but Okay. Um, do you want to reach out, or do you want to just plan it for the week before? Uh, I guess you can reach out, or I can reach out, or what do you think? I'd rather do that than the, the 20th is not good for me. All right. Uh, for, we, we've got a, a big function the next night, so we're going to be very busy. Oh, that's right, too. It's open house, right? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. So the 27th. So I'm going to, I'll call the chief and tell it's not good for Lieutenant Palmer. <laughs> He's got something to do. <laughs> It's all about. <laughs> it's all about you. He's going to make a presentation at the uh, open house. So, um, yeah, I, I prefer to, to do it at the police station. I, to be frank, I'd like to move there. Um, I, um, if I that would be possible. To the town administrator, they'll probably tell me to reach out to them. But okay. we'll confirm between now and then. Yeah, I believe it's probably up to. Do you want to keep chief. it on the twenty seventh? Yes, yeah, so let's do that. And if we have to change it, we'll know within the next Day or few days. Yeah, yeah. If, the if only thing I'm not sure about, I'm not sure that the cameras are up and running yet, but I can look into that. There's, later. there's, I think we're okay technically because it's, that's Mark, the, Mark gave his thumbs up. Okay. Right. He's the, he is <laughs> the quarter master. The door. <laughs> so, uh, if, if I, there is, there is a small technical issue there, but it's not going to affect us. Okay. Okay. I think uh, that's my understanding of that, but I'll, I'll follow up on that too. Thanks. All right. And, uh, with that. I'll take a motion to I'll adjourn. make a motion that we adjourn. I'll There's second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.